I've made a lot of dishes from the Fallout cookbook and many of you expressed concern over the amount of rads I've been accumulating. So to alleviate your concerns, I'm heading back to the Fallout cookbook to try the recipes for Stimpak and Radaway. And to truly test their effectiveness, I'll need to lose some HP and build up rad, so I'll go on a hunt. A hunt for a Deathclaw and eat its meat in the form of a Deathclaw Wellington. In the cookbook, this originally was intended to be pork pot pies, but since there aren't any pigs or livestock around after the nuclear war, wastelanders have to get creative and have found that deathclaw shoulder meat is a tender and tasty substitute. Someone also left a note on the recipe page that Wellingham from Diamond City has some cooking tips for this recipe, so I sent post-war miso down there to confirm, and what do you know? There is a Mr. Handy named Wellingham who is kind of snooty, but it does seem like it's got some culinary chops. Let's see what you have. Tastes for a sophisticated palate. Apparently it'll give you a Deathclaw Wellingham recipe that's absolutely to die for, but you have to give it a pristine Deathclaw egg before it gives you the recipe. While Fallout Miso gets busy with that, good ol' IRL me is gonna work on the pre-war version of the recipe. In a bag or bowl, add two and a half pounds of cubed pork shoulder meat or deathclaw shoulder meat if you're in the nuclear wasteland, a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of pepper, and mix it all together. Now in a Dutch oven, heat up two tablespoons of canola oil in medium high heat, then add in the pork mixture and brown all sides, transfer the pork cubes to a plate and set aside. In the same Dutch oven, add another tablespoon of canola oil and then toss in two chopped up celery ribs, two peeled and chopped medium carrots, one chopped up medium yellow onion, one chopped leek, three minced garlic cloves, a teaspoon of dried rosemary, and half a teaspoon of caraway seeds, and cook everything together until the veggies are soft. Once soft, add a quarter cup of vodka to deglaze the pan and scrape off the brown bits at the bottom, then add in two tablespoons of tomato paste and mix everything together. Then this is where it gets confusing. There looks to be some kind of error in the cookbook. It says to add one cup or four cups of chicken broth. I don't know what's the correct number, but I'll start with one because we can always add more. Now add in one russet potato, peeled and cut to bite-sized pieces. Of course, potatoes are extinct in Fallout, so you can use these potato-tomato hybrids creatively called Tatoes, but apparently these taste disgusting and resemble ketchup-flavored cardboard, so I'm just gonna use the russets instead. Also add in two bay leaves and bring back the fried pork, then lower the heat to medium-low and then cover and simmer for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes have passed, I check to see how it's cooking, and it's looking pretty thick. So I think it's actually four cups of chicken broth that we needed, so let's add that. I actually reached out to the author, and she did confirm four cups is the right number, so keep that in mind. Then add in two cups of quartered mushrooms and cook that for another 15 minutes until all the vegetables are soft. After that, remove the bay leaves and in a small bowl, whisk together a quarter cup of cornstarch with half a cup of water to create a sort of slurry. Then stir that into the stew and combine it until it thickens a bit. Add some salt and pepper to taste and remove from the heat. Then in some ramekins or oven-proof bowls, fill those up with a stew. Then use some store-bought pastry and cut those into circles to place over the bowls. Now we're gonna need an egg yolk. Of course, if you manage to take down a death claw and wanna use an egg from its nest, then be my guest. But I'm using a regular old egg and beating the yolk and brushing that on the pastry and bake those in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. And when the crust is golden brown, you can take them out and you're ready to enjoy your death claw wellingham. If you're actually using deathclaw meat, then I'm sure by now you could use some stim pack to top up your health. So let's make some. According to the cookbook, you'll need two tablespoons of unflavored gelatin. If you're not lucky enough to come across some in the wasteland, then maybe you'll be able to make some from Brahmin hooves instead. Combine the gelatin with a quarter cup of pomegranate juice along with a quarter cup of sugar and three drops of red food coloring. Mix it all together and then add in one cup of boiling water and combine everything well until the gelatin is dissolved. Our final ingredient is three quarter cup of cold raspberry vodka Mix well and put them in some syringes and place these in the fridge for at least 5 hours to let them set. For fast effective healing of both overall health and every injured body part, nothing beats a stim pack. Now that we got health covered, it's time to work on the rads. 
So let's talk upon some Rataway. The cookbook's recipe for Rataway consists of squeezing the juice of three lime wedges and adding a dash of ground allspice. Add some ice, then pour in a quarter cup of dark rum and a quarter cup of Nuka Cola soda. If you want to see the cookbook's recipe for Nuka Cola, check out my Nuka Cola video where I try all of the Nuka Cola recipes from the Fallout cookbook. Stir it all together and your Rataway is ready. But since we're going full out Fallout, we're gonna try to make it look like the game by pouring them in these blood bags and slapping on the Rataway label. There you go, a Rataway a day keeps the mutations at bay. Okay, let's try out these Deathclaw Wellingham. I'm liking how these turned out. Crust is buttery golden and you can feel the crisp as you dig in. The center is nice and saucy with a deep rich color. It tastes super comforting with that nice texture contrast between the saucy stew and the crust. A bit under seasoned because I didn't add enough salt but that's easily rectified. Gonna add some hot sauce too cause why not? Yeah, much better. Hot sauce just makes everything better. Just remember, four cups of chicken stock instead of one. Now that we've racked up some damage from fighting the death claw and built up some rads from eating its meat, time to put us back to tip top shape with some stim pack and rad away. First the stim pack. I think these look super fun. It doesn't look as rough as the games and it's meant to be taken orally but come on I'm not gonna actually stab myself with a rusty dirty syringe. Taste wise? I'm not feeling it. Never been a fan of vodka, the hint of raspberry and the pomegranate flavor helps a wee bit but the vodka is too overwhelming for me. Fitting though cause it actually does taste like medicine. I do really like the consistency and I think it's really fun to squeeze out. I would definitely do this again but next time I'll just leave out the alcohol and just stick to the fruit juices. If you want to know where I got the oral syringes from I'll link it in the description. Now for the Rataway. Look at this packaging. That looks pretty game accurate if you ask me. I'll put a link to the blood bags in the description as well and maybe I'll tweet out the label file. I'm kind of at a loss on how to approach this, I've never drank from a blood bag before. Maybe I'll just do my best Morbius impression. Yeah, that's pretty good. Unlike the stim pack, the rum in this isn't as overpowering as the vodka. Rum and cola is a mix that I enjoy and I love the limey zing. I don't really taste the allspice though, so maybe I'll add more next time to truly get a sense of the taste. I'm sure you can use regular cola for this recipe, but the Nuka Cola recipe in my opinion is sweeter and more fruity than store-bought cola, which I actually think works better with the flavors here. I like it. And best of all, now I'm not going to turn into a ghoul. Take better care of yourself in the future, okay? 